Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'd like to help you better understand the differences between an optical audio connection and an HDMI A or C audio connection. Because even though both of these technologies provide an incredibly easy way of connecting your media equipment up to an HD display or a soundbar or even a home stereo system, there are huge differences in the audio standards they support and the features they provide. Now, before I get too deep into the specifications and use cases for each of the cables, I thought I'd start off with a little history of where these connections came from and explain a little bit about the technology behind them. So for starters, both of these cables are transporting digital audio. So unlike older cables, the RCA connections, and even older standards than that, these are digital transports, which means they're moving pulses across the cables. The big difference between them and the way they do that is that the optical cable uses light pulses. So there's a laser light that is actually injected into the cable. It passes through a fiber optic cable, comes out the other end as pulses of light. So that's the digital transport of that audio across an optical cable. With HDMI, it's using standard electromagnetic signals. So there are pulses being transferred across that cable. This is copper. This is fiber optic. Now, the reason that matters is because fiber optic is less susceptible to noise. So if you're operating equipment in a very noisy environment, maybe you've got a lot of other electromechanical devices operating in that vicinity, optical cables are fairly immune to that, whereas HDMI cables may pick up a hum or a click or some other interference on the cable. The HDMI cables are also limited to about 15 meters in length. If you go much beyond that, you really can't get a good signal at the other end because it's based on about a five volt signal, which degrades over the length of the cable. On the other hand, the optical cables can transport that optical pulse much further, so sometimes two or three times as long as the HDMI cables. The other big difference between them is that this can only transport audio. It's only designed to transport audio, whereas this transports audio, video, control signals, things like CEC. A lot of other features are built into the HDMI. This is a much older standard. It was developed in 1983 by Toshiba way back in the day to transport audio from their CD players to the amplifiers. And because of that, these connectors on the end are sometimes referred to as Toslink or Toshiba link cables. And you'll find that today in a lot of equipment. You'll see the ports that these plug into will be labeled SP diff, optical, or even Toslink. And I've got a small media player right here that has a Toslink connector on the back of it for audio. And it looks like a tiny little doggy door where you'll plug this in. It's protected because that lasers running all the time and that door closes up when you're not using it to keep that light inside the unit. The minute you plug the cable in, if you look at the other end of the light, and don't do that by the way, never look into the end of an optical cable, but if you hold it up against your hand, you'll see that red laser pulsing through the end of it. The HDMI, on the other hand, is a pretty standard electrical connection between your media gear and your monitor or your audio system. The reason ARC is important, and ARC stands for Audio Return Channel, is that that allows you to plug your communication into your TV, so your media device into your TV directly, and if your display has an ARC or an EARC port on it, you can connect that down to your soundbar, and that way all the audio you're sending to the TV is sent directly to the soundbar. So a couple of differences between them, and again, 1983 this was developed. This came along a little bit later, and it's gone through several revisions to enhance it to carry higher resolution media content, better quality audio, and a much expanded profile for audio standards in the unit. Now, I'll go through the specifications in a few minutes, and I'll talk about the two use cases, because even though this is an older technology, there are certain situations where you'll want to use an optical cable and maybe not have to worry about HDMI, and there are certainly other situations with audio in particular, especially high-end audio, where the HDMI cable will do a better job. Now, if you stay tuned next, I'm going to go through the specifications. I'll give you a few different use cases of where you'd use the optical cable versus the HDMI cable, and then I'll come back at the end with some suggestions on where I tend to use these two cables in my own environment. An optical audio connection provides a wide range of features that include support for up to 5.1 audio surround sound, uncompressed stereo, Dolby Digital, and DTS standards. It provides a pretty wide bandwidth of 384 kilobits per second, and it allows for longer cable connections between the media device and the audio device. Some of the use cases for an optical audio connection include connecting older gear to newer gear that offer those optical audio connections. It also allows you to remove outside interference, which may become a problem with HDMI. The longer the HDMI cable gets, the more chances are that you'll pick up outside interference, which results in a hum in the audio. And then finally, optical audio connections allow you to completely isolate the audio from the video, which gives you a wider variety of connection options to home stereo systems and soundbars than an HDMI connection may provide. 
An HDMI ARC audio connection is a much more evolved standard that provides a wider range of audio codec support, as well as advanced features and functionality for both video and audio. It supports up to 7.1 audio surround sound capabilities and provides full support for Dolby Atmos, Dolby Digital Plus, True HD formats, and even DTS-HD. It also allows a single cable to carry audio, video, and control signals. An HDMI ARC audio connection provides a wide range of use cases that make it the perfect connection technology for all of your modern media gear. And the fact that one single cable can carry audio, video, control signals, and other advanced functionality between your media equipment and a high definition display or a soundbar means that the installation is incredibly simple. And if your equipment is ARC certified or EARC certified, you can enjoy a host of advanced functionality, again, through that single cable. I hope those overviews were helpful in understanding the main differences between an optical audio connection and an HDMI ARC audio connection. And now I'd like to point out a few things to keep in mind when you're deciding which of these two technologies to use for connecting your media equipment up to a high definition display or a soundbar. And I'll start with the optical audio connection. I use a lot of Toslink cables at home for a variety of reasons, but the one place they really come in handy is allowing me to use my older audio equipment with my newer media gear. So for example, I have a lot of older audio equipment that doesn't provide an HDMI connection natively, but it does have an audio input that's optical. All of my new media gear provides both an HDMI connection and typically an audio out that's optical as well, and that's a perfect solution for a Toslink cable. It allows me to plug it into my media gear, plug it into my amplifier, and enjoy better quality audio from that media equipment. Equipment. Another great application for this is when I have a long run between my media gear and that amplifier system, whether it be a soundbar or home audio system, because a Toslink cable is pretty much impervious to outside electromechanical interference, whereas an HDMI cable, when you stretch it a long distance, almost acts like an antenna. So if there's any kind of electrical interference in the house, if you've got you know, fluorescent lights, or you've got a microwave oven going, or you've got Wi-Fi uh, pops all over the house, this could pick up all of that interference, and that'll turn into hum in the audio. Because this is optical, again, it's completely resilient to any kind of outside electromechanical interference, so you're gonna get a nice clean audio signal between your media gear and your amplifier. This is also a great solution if you have a long run between the media gear and your amplifier, because HDMI is fairly limited to maybe 15 meters. If you get beyond that, you start getting degradation in the signal because it's, it's an electrical signal, it's about five volts. So the longer the cable, the lower that can actually drop when the voltage gets to the end of it. Whereas with an optical cable, I can go, geez, 90 feet, 100 feet with that with no issues whatsoever because a light pulse doesn't degrade over the distance of that fiber cable. So it's great for long runs, it's great for clean audio, and it's also really good for integrating older audio equipment with new media gear. It'll support stereo just fine. It'll support up to 5.1 surround sound as well. So for a lot of my installations, a Toslink cable is the perfect answer. For everything else, it's HDMI, especially HDMI ARC or eARC, because HDMI carries not only audio, which is what Toslink carries, but it carries video signals, audio signals, control signals for CEC. It does things like HDR, it'll transport HDCP signals. So with the newer media equipment that really requires that higher definition audio and some of the higher level features that CEC and HDMI provide, you really need to use an HDMI cable. Now my suggestion here would be, number one, keep the cable as short as possible. Because again, the longer the cable gets, the more flaky it can get with that connection. You start having dropouts and have all kinds of issues with handshakes between the media gear and your display. The second thing I'd mention is, if you're gonna buy a good quality cable, make sure it's high speed. Also make sure it's certified for HDMI 2.1 and HDCP 2.2, because that way you're kind of future-proofing your connection that as you upgrade your media equipment, all of the features that those standards provide will be able to be handled by that cable. So that's really important. Keep the cable short. Whatever you can do to shorten that distance between your media device and your display or your audio gear will give you much better performance. And again, this is the future of audio connections, but don't discard the old Toslink cables because I use them an awful lot at home and they really do the job. So I think they're both solutions that are great, but it's important to understand the differences to know where you'd use these two cables. And that's pretty much all I had for today. So I hope you found this helpful and until next time, thanks again for watching.